And on this side, you've got a selection of shelves where you can hide valuables and small things um, by the end of the bed. Don't read anything into that. <laughs> Welcome to Not Another White Box. My name is Cameron and this is the channel that brings you all that's cool, quirky and unusual in the caravan world. Today we're at the NEC Caravan and Motorhome Show in Birmingham and we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the entire Bailey Discovery D4 range. For 2023 it's received quite an extensive overhaul from the smallest D4 II model up to the largest D4 IV model and there's the most exciting news of a brand new layout launching for 2023 this here behind me, the D44L. So we're gonna take an in-depth look at each model in turn. And I suppose the big news here is that now that Eldis have temporarily suspended producing the Explore range, the Discovery is now the cheapest range of caravans on offer in Britain from a British manufacturer. And there are so many things to love about this caravan, not just its price point. So without further ado, let's dive in with the smallest D42 model and take a look at why these caravans are so quirky, cool and unusual. Let's go. We're going to start today's tour with the D42, which is the smallest model in the range. And this now boasts quite a few claims to fame. At a recommended retail price of £19,999, it is actually the cheapest conventional sized caravan made by a British manufacturer at this point. And with a fully laden weight of 887 kilograms, it's also one of the lightest, which makes this caravan very interesting. So what we find with the new Discovery is that they've, what they've taken is the original idea and just given it so many tweaks and just fine tuning. They've really taken on board a lot of the criticisms of the initial design um, and tried to improve them where possible. Of course, with everything that gets an upgrade, there's a few things like the graphics package is probably the most notable thing on the exterior. Um, we have these nice Art Deco lines which swoop up from the front, including one either side of the front picture window. Moving back towards the middle of the caravan, you'll find that the wheel arch has changed shape. It used to be square on the initial Discovery run, and now it's got a rounded shape to it, just so it makes the wheel look a bit bigger. But at the back, we've retained the original curved walls, which don't really serve any purpose anymore other than giving it a bit of style and flair, which we absolutely love here on Not Another White Box. They've kept the style, they've kept the shape. It, that just elevates this caravan, I think, from being a budget caravan that sort of looks cheap, like a lot of caravans in this market sector do, to something that seems a little bit more like a lifestyle choice as opposed to just a cheap caravan. And you won't be disappointed because that theme really does continue on the interior. So let's go take a look. Stepping into this smallest discovery model, which is the D42, it's immediately noticeable some of the changes that have taken place. The first thing you'll notice is that there is a new upholstery throughout. And they've also got these new shapes to the cupboard. Um, some of the spec has been tweaked as well to make it a little bit more practical. Um, and some of the things have changed round. First thing I'm noticing is these shelves up here which add an extra bit of storage um, but also down here we've got these little cubby holes that are good for storing things in and also uh, the magazine racks which used to be up here on the initial discovery range are now down here at the front. What's nice about this smallest model is although it is the smallest discovery it certainly feels huge inside. You've got two six foot long bunks which you can use as single beds or it makes into an enormous double which is six foot long by the width of the caravan which is about seven foot two. So it's a really adaptable space in here and actually feels a very pleasant place to be. One of the things that I love about the Bailey Discovery range is that they really do pack a lot in for this price point and the size. Um, and what I think is just incredible is that it, it really is the cheapest caravan that you can buy from a British manufacturer, yet it still has everything that you would want and need, such as a Dometic three-way fridge, which is electronically controlled. There is uh, a Thetford XXX cooker, which doesn't have the fourth uh, electric burner, but what do you expect at this price? Um, but it does have a combination oven and grill. The kitchen in this D42 does feel a little bit on the small side, but what Bailey have done is they've brought the sink forward to create an extra bit of worktop behind here, a more usable space. 
They've also fitted this little flap on the end uh, just to give you a little bit more prep space. But I have to be honest, the kitchen by design is a little bit small. What we have here um, opposite is the same working height worktop. So you do have a little bit of versatility to use this as sort of a ship's galley kitchen, if you will. What's lovely about it is, um, although it is a caravan at the lowest price sector in Britain, it still packs in a full amount of storage, which you tend to find is the first thing that a manufacturer economizes on. Um, but there's plenty here throughout. We have the control panel next to the door um, and plenty of easy access to the light switches. And over here, just above the sink, we have the controls for the heating, which incidentally is a Truma combi boiler system. So that is underneath the bunk, out of the way. There is no heat front on display. It's a blown air system that runs all the way around the caravan. You may have noticed this little trap door that I'm stood on. And it's not a secret escape route, don't worry. It is actually where the leisure battery is stored. And the reason Bailey do this is to reduce the number of lockers that they need to fit, but also in placing it here, just behind the axle, it reduces nose weight and improves stability. They've done the same trick with the gas bottles, which store at the side of the caravan. There's not actually a front locker on this caravan, although there is a side access locker to the front bunk for storing some of your exterior items such as your water pipes um, and leveling blocks etc but for its price it's actually got a really good level of kit as standard and there's nothing that i would say it's missing other than perhaps a solar panel which again is a very easy fit which you don't find in standard um, on many caravans in britain today it's really only the top end ones but it even boasts uh, usb charging on the spotlights um, and the heating system is iNet ready, which means that you can connect a mobile device to it to control the system from your mobile phone, which we'll talk a bit more about when we move around and look at the D44L. But at the back here in the D42 is the washroom and immediately next to the door we have a wardrobe which has a nice little bit of shelving in um, and a generous amount of hanging space. A feature that I particularly like is this shoe cupboard next to the door. Um, one of the bugbears that I have when I'm out caravanning is when people kick their shoes off and you've got to fall over them all in the doorway um, before you can even get in the caravan. So full points to Bailey there for doing something practical and adding in the shoe locker next to the door. Finally in the corner we have the washroom which is actually an all-in-one wet room and Typically, a wet room means it's a small space, but actually in here, there's plenty of room to get a shower. We even find this little Belfast-style sink, which is a really nice touch at a caravan, which, like I could say, costs a pound less than £20,000. Um, elsewhere in the washroom, you'll find that there's a cu cupboard, and there's a toilet, which, again, another surprise at this price level, is it's got an electric flush option, and even ducted heating into this washroom space so again although this caravan is cheap which i keep stressing it doesn't feel cheap in its appointment it doesn't feel like it's lacking in quality it doesn't feel like the construction is flimsy or anything in the middle of the range we have this new d44l which is a completely new layout and style for 2023 for the discovery range it's a familiar-ish layout to most caravanners. The side dinette, sort of rear washroom, um, but as you'll see in a moment, they've sort of tweaked it a bit to get it into a really compact body shell. This is a really great rival for the Explore 304, which is a long-established small caravan um, produced by Eldis. But as they've announced this year that it's going to be temporarily suspended or perhaps indefinitely suspended, um, it leaves the door wide open for those customers to find something else. I don't think you can go far wrong with this new D44L, but I've not actually had a look at it yet. So let's go take a look together at why this new caravan is so interesting. Let's go. Oh, so straight away, I'm walking into this caravan and um, like I said, I've not seen it in person, so this is my first honest reaction to what I'm seeing. And immediately, this actually feels like a very spacious, well-laid-out caravan. 
The kitchen is a lot bigger than I was expecting. There's certainly a lot more work, worktop space than um, sort of appeared in the photos. And the front lounge seems a little bit bigger than what I was expecting too. So up here, you've got this converts into a double bed at the front. And here we have, uh, this can either be a single bed at the bottom, or there is a bunk here that folds up to form the fourth berth. Um, like we've just had a look at in the D42, all the, new, all the new features of the Discovery, such as the upholstery, the new wood, the new cupboard designs, are standard across the entire range. We'll start by taking a closer look at the kitchen, which for the van size, this caravan is just 4.2 metres long. That's just shy of 14 feet. I can't believe the size of kitchen that they cram into here. So if you're a young family um, and you've got kids, it's great to have a kitchen that has a lot of space. Starting near the door, you'll actually find down here um, what appears to be an extra worktop is actually hiding the place where you store the dining table, which just slides out from here. And there's a safety catch to stop your kids doing it for you. See, Bailey had thought of everything there. And then moving forwards, we have um, the Thetford Triple X cooker. Now, because of the caravan's price point, there is no electric ring here, but that's fine. You've got three burners. There's a large burner for quickly boiling your kettle and two smaller ones. What um, people may be thinking is there is just an oven. It is actually a combination unit. So there is a grill at the top and an oven at the bottom, um, all combined in the same unit. The beauty of this design is where you might have a separate grill um, in some larger caravans is it just frees up more space and underneath there is plenty of storage in here um, throughout the kitchen. Underneath the sink we've got the Dometic three-way fridge which is a fairly standard fitting in most caravans today. There's a spacious sized round sink um, and there will be a detachable draining board which will store here. Um, but I like that versatility of being able to take the drain board away so you've got this extra worktop. Bailey are assuming that you might choose to position uh, your TV here. So there is a TV point, um, there's mains electrics, light switches, and also a 12 volt if you have a 12 volt camping TV and your TV aerial input because of course there is a TV aerial fitted on the roof as standard. Again, one of the new features of the Discovery is these sort of ergonomically shaped cupboards, which are quite interesting. Um, they just give it a little bit more style and flair for the interior. It's certainly unique amongst everything I've seen at the show. There's two very generously sized cupboards up here where you can put your plates and cups and things. Um, there's no wire racks on this particular one, but it could be that this is the first model produced, which is exclusively for the show and for press to use. So. I'm not going to go too hard on critiquing what might be missing because it's quite common that there might be a few bits and pieces um, that you would expect to find on the standard production model. But overall, it's a great size kitchen. Um, you may notice here that there's just a panel. That is because behind there is where the gas bottle is stored, um, which you access from the outside. And uh, you can fit a full size six kilogram gas bottle in there. In fact, you can fit two. And the beauty of that design is it keeps the weight close to the axle, reduces your nose weight. So if you're towing with a smaller car, it'll just tow better, be more stable on the road. Uh, and overall, it's just a much better idea to store the gas there. The trade-off is you have lost an extra cupboard in here. But to be honest, I don't see that as being a problem. The kitchen is huge. Um, I will point out before I move on that right next to the door in prime position, um, exactly where you want everything, at the top we have the controller for the heating system which is the Truma blown air system so it's concealed underneath the bunks you can't see it, it doesn't take up any space inside um, and this is iNet ready so if you pay for the iNet upgrade um, you can control the heating system from your phone you might be thinking what do I want to do that for? the idea is if you're out walking and you're a bit fed up and you've thought that country pub was only three miles away and it was actually seven you can sit there, tell your caravan, put the heating on, and when you get back and you're absolutely exhausted, the caravan will be nice and warm. But like I said, that's an option. It's not a standard feature, um, but it's a very easy upgrade and I think worth doing. Um, you've got your main light switches here, and this is the main control panel. And I just want to say from a design point of view, it's really great that Bailey put all this here because when I'm pitching up the caravan and you arrive on site, picture the scene, we all think we go caravanning and it's glorious weather all the time. As we know, it never is, especially in Britain. 
Um, just to be able to lean through the door without having to put the corner steadies down and switch the heating on and make sure all the systems are up and running while you're still setting up outside is so convenient and so easy. So top marks here to Bailey for putting all these controls in an easy accessible place, the out of the way of small children reaching up and interfering with them um, and overall it's a great spot. And on one last note of practicality next to the door we've just got two small shelves and a shelf above the door where you can keep your keys and little things that you need that you sort of throw out your pockets when you walk in. Again, out the way of small hands. Just goes to show that Bailey have actually really thought about this design in great detail. So the back of the D44 is where you would traditionally find an end washroom with this layout, but because of its compact size, again, it's barely 4.2 meters internal length in here. What you have is a separate corner washroom and a separate wardrobe which is exactly the same setup as the D42 that we've just taken a look at. But I'll give you a quick refresher. Down here by the door, you have a handy cupboard um, for keeping shoes, which again, full marks, it's right by the door. It couldn't be easier to just walk in, kick your shoes off, put them straight in the cupboard out of the way, so you're not tripping over them. Above that, we've got the wardrobe, which has a little bit of shelving, um, and also the ladder is stored in here for the bunk bed when you put that up. And over in this corner, we have the identical washroom um, to the D42, which is a wet room, but it's actually very generously sized. And again, it's quite nice to see this separate Belfast style sink, which is quite a nice touch for a caravan at this price point. Um, but as you can see, there's actually quite a lot of room in here. There's a shower curtain that goes round to protect the sink and the woodwork. And there is a Thetford toilet fitted as standard. And one final nice little touch is that the lights in here are on a pull string and there's plenty of lighting throughout um, to keep it a well illuminated space when you use it. Finally at the front end of the D44L is the lounge and when I first saw the pictures of this and, and saw the layouts I thought this is going to be quite a tight space but actually quite the contrary. Four adults could quite easily sit here with plenty of space around the table which you've seen stores in the kitchen would go in the middle. Now again we've just had a look at this but I'll just um, emphasize a few points here is that they've got this new design at the front with the uh, cubby holes for storing things. We've got things like the magazine rack down here, the extra shelving at the front. It just all goes to make this a very practical little caravan. And despite all this, despite its low price, um, despite the fact that it's built with the Alitech construction, this D44L tips the scales at just 1,082 kilograms fully laden. So it's a really versatile, lightweight four berth that families with a small car, or if you've got an electric car, as many people do now, this is actually a really good proposition um, if you want something that's lightweight, easy to tow, but has plenty of space for you and your family. I just want to take a moment at this point in the video to talk you through some of the exterior um, design details. I think the main selling point of the exterior of these caravans is the Alutech design. Uh, this is a, a patented system by Bailey, which basically means that the side walls um, are built in one piece and fully bonded, and so is the front panel all the way to the back of the roof. So on the Discovery, there's actually only three panels because um, the front wraps all the way to the top of the roof, and the sides wrap all the way around to meet in the middle at the back. And what that gives the caravan is incredible strength and uh, there's actually no timber in the construction. So they're backed with a 10 year water ingress guarantee. Um, it's physically impossible for them to get damp in the side walls. The floors are still made of wood, um, so there is still potential there. But compared to other caravans produced in Britain, there is an exponentially less likely risk of water ingress with the Bailey Alutech system. And I do think it's one of the best ways, if not the best way of building a caravan that's on offer in Britain today. So it's a big selling point of this van and even at the price point of sort of 20,000 to 22,000 pounds, you still get the full system, the full Alutech design front to back. There's no cutting corners with it. There is no compromise with it. It is exactly the same system on the £20,000 Discovery as what's used on the £40,000 Alicanto Grande. Bailey are really proud of this system and for good reason too. It's so well tried and tested um, that there's just very little to go wrong with it. So that is definitely a huge selling point for the Discovery range.
finally, the largest model in the D4 range is the D44. And this is the same as the previous D44 that has a near side fixed bed and rear end washroom. But new for 2023 are all the features that we've already taken a look at, but there are actually a few more tweaks inside this model that really elevate it from the version before. But before we go inside and take a look, I'll just point out a couple of things on the outside. First, the first thing that you'll notice is that we stood under this big canopy awning. Now, those who followed the Discovery since its launch will know that one of the main selling points of it, thanks to that curvaceous rear end, is that, uh, oh matron, we're getting a bit carry on camping there, but thanks to the curvaceous back end, you could have an awning that went down the side and round the back, and it effectively tripled the usable space with the caravan. Unfortunately, they've had um, some supply chain issues with that, so the awning is not available. So a compromise for 2023 is this rollout awning, which is permanently fixed to the roof, which is an optional extra across all the D4 models. Now, you can't really go wrong with a fold-out awning. Most people have them on caravans now. They're a very common fitting. This particular one, um, you can have sides that go in it, and it's as easy as you connect a winding uh, tool at the front here, and you just wind the awning out like a typical canopy, drop the two legs, job done. It's so easy and it's permanently stored up there unless you've got the side panels which you could just keep in one of the lockers. But overall, I actually think this is a lot easier than the wraparound awning. As impressive as the wraparound awning was, this is a much more practical solution. So that's it for the outside. Let's take a look at the inside now and see what's changed for 2023. Inside the D44, it's a familiar large space because this is a very conventional layout in Britain now. But initially, I felt that the D44, the first phase of the D4 range, was a little bit cold inside, a little bit lacking in something. And I feel like what Bailey have done with this facelift is really try and make it feel like a more expensive caravan than it actually is. Touches such as the wood grain, which I know a lot of people watching my channel will go, oh, are we sick of wood grain? I know, I'm kind of with you, but in this environment, combined with the copious amounts of grey, it is actually a nice contrast in here. And compared to the early models, which had a little bit of wood grain, um, it just feels a little bit more contemporary and a bit more stylish. The main thing that you'll notice um, is this entire new central section, which um, is nothing like the original. Um, the original had the control panel here, it had a drawer here, um, and it didn't have this sort of recess bit. And the idea here is you can tuck your coats out of the way just in the doorway, which is a brilliant idea actually. You'll find the main control panels here, but unlike the D44L, all the heating controls are on the opposite side by the kitchen. But although we've lost a drawer here, it's mainly to make a bit more space for in the gas locker because since the initial production of the model, uh, Calla have discontinued the smallest size of gas bottles. So now caravanners have to have the larger six kilogram um, bottle as standard. So that's probably one of the main motivations for changing that design. But um, I actually quite like this. You've got now got coat storage, which the previous model didn't really have. And on this side, you've got a selection of shelves where you can hide valuables and small things um, by the end of the bed. Don't read anything into that. <laughs> Opposite here on the door we have the kitchen and I have to be honest it's similar criticism to the original one just the sheer limitations of the caravan. Although it feels big and it is the biggest discovery in the range it's still only 5.3 meters in here which for this particular layout isn't an oversized caravan by any means and unfortunately the kitchen um, has been sacrificed for that it has this extension piece here to give you a little bit more workspace um, and as with the previous models we've got exactly the same cooker setup exactly the same sink but you'll notice there isn't actually room for a drainer which is a little bit disappointing we've still got plenty of um, oversized cupboards up here uh, plenty of storage space to be honest uh, electric point here for your kettle by the sink um, but they've crammed a lot into this very small space i'm not really sure how they could have done it differently other than lose some of the length off the bunks at the front but to me this is a little bit on the small side for my liking 
Moving um, towards the back of the caravan, we have this French style bed at the back and it is a, a generous double bed size. Despite the cut off at the bottom, it's still got a pretty good width on it. Uh, Bailey have redesigned a little bit of this detail at the back with headboard and the contrasting grey and these little bedside shelves where you can leave your phone at night because uh, if you're like me, you practically sleep with your phone. So uh, that's really good. Like I mentioned, there's extra storage at the bottom of the bed now, uh, which wasn't previously there on the old model. But otherwise, you've got these great large oversized lockers, which just give you extra bit of storage. On the opposite side, we have uh, the wardrobe, which has two doors to open it, plenty of hanging space, um, and a little shelf at the bottom. Back here, we have uh, the table storage. This is the table that goes at the front um, between the two seats. And overall, there's not too much they can do with the space. I think it possibly would have been better if somehow this could have moved up a bit and made the kitchen just that little bit longer. Um, but like I said, it is a fairly compact fixed bed and washroom caravan. They've done the best they can with the space that they've got. The other big news for 2023 is the bathroom, which has been completely changed from the original D44 washroom. It still has the same basic layout, but all this is new. There's tons of storage, shelves down here by the toilet. You've got this vanity unit here, um, which has more shelves for storing things. And again, like the other models, we've got this nice little Belfast style sink which is quite a nice plush fitting for a caravan at this price point. Um, it's a bit strange having nothing here at all, no cupboards, um, but it's, it's great. It gives you a lot more space in here. Um, still a standard Thetford cassette toilet, which has electric flush, which again, for this price point is pretty impressive. And finally, tucked away in this corner, I don't know if you can squeeze in here with me, but uh, <laughs> is this shower, which as you can see, I'm stood in it. There's plenty of room in here. It seems a bit bijou and compact, but it's not actually. It's perfectly workable. It's a good size. And again, at just five meters 30 long internally, they have squeezed so much in here. Finally, at the front end of the D44, you'll find a very generous lounge. Uh, I mean, typically I think this caravan would be bought by couples who would use it as a luxury two berth, but this does convert into a double bed and a very generously sized one at that. We've also got um, the panoramic window, which uh, we've had a look at. I feel like it is slightly wider, perhaps, than the original D4 um, front window. It's still not the ideal width, but um, as I mentioned in my original D4 3 review all those years ago, um, the cost of manufacturing a window that was this size and went wider would just really price the caravan out of its sector. And unfortunately, you just have to accept some design detail compromises such as that. When the Discovery D4 range first launched back in sort of late 2019, early 2020, people were saying, oh, the front window is too small. But unfortunately, it's just that is the reason why. Um, just the cost and having to add the strength into it. So obviously this gets the full effect of the wind when you're towing. It's just a design compromise that we have to accept. And don't think because it's slightly narrow that you're losing out. It's still a huge picture window that lets in tons of light in here and you can still sit and look out the front. So overall, I'm actually very impressed by uh, the design changes for the new Discovery D4 range. I feel like Bailey have really listened to the end users of these caravans and within their design limitations, like we mentioned, there's a few compromises on some of the models, but there is always a compromise on caravan design. I think Bailey have really squeezed out every inch of practicality with new shelving options, extra storage, um, just they've, they've really thought about the end user with this and I really want to commend that for a manufacturer in Britain because we get so many designs, particularly of conventional white boxes, which are so impractical and so badly thought out and Caravan has just kind of put up with it because it's all there is. So overall, I'm very impressed with the changes for the new Bailey Discovery D4 range and I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at the caravans with me. I'm really impressed that Bailey have taken on board a lot of the criticisms of the initial D4 range from two or three years ago and they've just implemented so many little changes and as we know, caravans are always a compromise of design but these are a pretty good compromise. And Bailey have really envisaged the end user and how the caravan will actually get used, 
which you know there's so many conventional white boxes produced in this country that are just terribly impractical and missing little details and manufacturers just don't put themselves in the mindset of, of what the caravaner wants and needs but I feel with this discovery range that Bailey really have. So I think there's top marks there for taking the criticisms on board and doing something about it. The new range just has lifted this from feeling like a budget cut price caravan to actually something that's a sensible lifestyle alternative. As we move to more electric cars and more cars uh, that are hybrids that can tow less and less, we're gonna be seeing this type of caravan get more and more popular. The, you know, these lighter, stripped back a little bit more aerodynamic caravans that are easier to tow and i don't think you can go wrong with the discovery d4 range um, there's a layout that satisfies a lot of caravaners needs there um, and the price point like i said this is now the cheapest range of caravans produced in britain by a british manufacturer so it's definitely worth factoring in i mean the, the standard equipment that comes with them the only thing that I think when I've looked at these vans that they could be missing is a solar panel. But again, at this price, it's not something that you would expect to find. And it's a very easy fit for the end user. So now that there's no um, rival, certainly for this year with the Explore range, the next alternative to the Discovery is the more conventional Sprite range by Swift, um, which are on average anywhere between two and four thousand pounds more than each Discovery model. Um, and you don't get that legendary Alutec construction, um, which is just so well tried and tested now. And I would definitely put my name to the claim that it's probably the best construction technique of any British van that's on the market at the moment. And the fact that you still get the full Alutec system on this budget van, which is shared with, you know, the tiniest discovery at £20,000, right up to the biggest Alicanto Grande at £40,000, they still built the same and still offer that same rugged exterior shell. So I think this is a caravan that you could certainly buy with confidence. You've got ongoing support from Bailey, a pretty good, um, well, an excellent Bailey dealer network in the country. Um, and yeah, if you're at the show, do check them out because I think they are great. If you've enjoyed today's video, please do hit the subscribe button or let me know what you think about the caravan range in the comments section below. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again soon.